Okay, and we're back with Catherine. Now, this issue of, of student loans, one of the most disgusting, vile traps and entrapments, it's yeah. theft. It's theft of the lives of people uh, I've ever seen. the worst thing. You know, I thought the housing bubble was pretty terrible. But this is the worst thing. And, Jeff, I uh, wrote an article you might want to republish called Bill Defender for the Economic Hitman of Student Loans. Because I used to Give be on the Give us the title board. one more time. Bill Defenderfer, it's William Defenderfer, the political hitman of, or the economic hitman of student loans. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I used to be on the board of Sally Mae. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, I was on the board of directors of Sally Mae way before they privatized. Uh -huh. And in fact, I had a confrontation with the management who then privatized them. Um, and it was really a difference over values. It was very funny. I'd tell it in the story. But here's what's interesting. It was one of my partners uh, who was I had on the board of Hamilton Securities who replaced me. And I believe it was him who figured out how to get the laws changed so they could make more money from bankrupting a child than they could from the child paying the loans off. So they could make more money from kids failing than from kids succeeding. That's his, uh, and it was intentional. That's evil. They oh. knew, no, but these guys knew exactly what they were doing, and they knew how to engineer it, and they did it. And Diefenderfer was one of the, you know, Diefenderfer, when it came to engineering litigation like that, was brilliant. He'd been the deputy director of the Office of Management and Budget. And um, one of the things I describe in the article was, was why people like William Diefenderfer are still socially acceptable. I mean, why does anybody talk to them? Why does anybody associate with them? I mean, the reality is when you do this to an entire generation of children, uh -huh. you destroy our future. Those children are our future. And when you destroy the younger generation, you destroy the future itself. That's uh, future suicide now. Uh, I, right. Yeah, the article is here. I'll put it up tonight again. You wrote this seven years ago, believe it or not. Right. Uh, right. Okay, this this uh, this whole thing in the last seven years has even gotten worse. Uh, as she just said, uh, Bill Diefenderfer was Dick Darman's deputy at the White House Office of Management and Budget, OMB, when I served as Assistant Secretary of Housing. I like the people at OMB. But from there, we just you just heard where this whole thing under Diefenderfer went. Now, here's another story. Uh, how families end up with massive student loan debt. You've heard the horror stories. 50,000 in student loan debt. 100,000 in student loan debt. Even $250,000 in student loan debt. But how does it happen? According to the college board, the average undergrad tuition for 2014-2015 was only $9,100 for a public four-year school. That means a four-year degree should only cost about $36,500. So where right. is all of this debt coming from? And why are families struggling to pay it off? And he goes on and explains it. But there it is. Right. And you should, um, in the in the Defenderfer article, what you'll see is you'll sh there's a chart that shows how tuition prices have risen way beyond the CPI rises. So it's quite extraordinary the way the universities have pumped up their, particularly the well, private universities well, have pumped up their tuition. And they knew the there expenses. was a cash cow, uh, back on cows again. They knew there was a cash right. cow moseying right. over to their property. You bet. Right, but it really, it really is an entrapment, and I'll tell you why. Um, I was working, and I tell this. Isn't in the, this a? In, excuse me, excuse me. Isn't this a felony entrapment? Really? Yes. Well, what I would say it's fraudulent inducement. It's, which fraud at the inducement is a felony if it's big enough, and this is huge. fraudulent inducement. But it, what it means is that the if you fraudulently induce somebody, then they don't really owe you the money. 
Now, here's why it's a fraudulent inducement. And I, I have an online book called Dylan Reed and Company and the, and the Aristocracy of Stock Profits. And I describe in there why it is a fraudulent inducement. In addition, in the pension fund article, there's a video of Sir James Goldsmith arguing against globalization. Mm -hmm. And both my book, my online book, Dylan Reed, and then the the Sir James Goldsmith video explains totally clearly that we knew globalization was going to wreck the middle class if we didn't do something. And so I was working with a group of people and the pension funds to make sure that globalization, that the middle class would, what I would call, jump the curve, be successful in globalization. And we knew what we had to do, whether it was to take care of the pension funds or to make sure people paid down their debt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the reality is everyone knew that the students, if the students went to school and took out a lot of debt and took the same old curriculum, the, the jobs and income wouldn't be there to pay that back. They knew. They knew. Oh, they evil. knew they had to change. They knew they had to change the curriculum. They knew they had to tell the middle class to pay down their debt, not take on more debt. They knew they could have told both the parents and the kids what they needed to come out the other side of their education, highly successful and relevant. And instead, they entrapped them. You know, because if you think they wasted their money and their debt capacity, do you have any idea how much time they wasted? Not getting the education that they needed.